Hello and welcome back. This is Greg French. Uh, today we're going to look at Chapter 2, Part 2, uh, covering the Computer Network uh, Training Series. Uh, today we're going to be looking at the OSI model. Uh, again, a little bit about myself. Uh, I've been teaching for about 10 years, about 25 years in the industry. have some certificates, A+, plus, Network+, plus, uh, also CCNA and CCNA uh, Instructor Certified. Uh, a little bit about, we've got a website here, computernetworktraining.net, where you can also find some uh, useful resources. Let's get started. Chapter 2, Part 2, the OSI model. We're going to spend a lot of time in the OSI model. We've got a couple more parts to this. Uh, we really need to spend some time understanding the OSI model, because the better you understand the OSI model, the better you will understand networking and how data packets are formed how they're capsulized, how they're decapsulized, how information flows through the network and through the Internet. So uh, OSI model in the early uh, 1980s, the OSI began uh, work on a universal set of specifications that would enable computers and computer platforms across the world to communicate openly. It's amazing uh, the age of this technology that we use today. They never expected it uh, to be used uh, in such a large network, but it's amazing how well it performs, even with the millions and millions of people that are using it simultaneously. This model that we're going to look at, called the Open Systems Interconnect, or the OSI model, uh, divides network communications into layers, seven layers, and we're going to discuss each layer in detail. Uh, the application layer being the layer at the top that's next to the user, uh, it's what we also call the interface between the user and our network. Uh, behind that is the presentation. The presentation is going to present the data to the user. Uh, if it's a document, it's going to put it in a format so the, doc so the user can read it. If it's a picture file, it's going to format it like a picture or voice or video, whatever it might be. So presentation presents the data in a form to the user so that he can use it. The session, uh, the third layer, is a layer that uh, sets up the communication between the two computers and maintains it and then tears it down. We have a transport layer. Uh, this is where you can see on the side here we talk about the data and these are the data packets. This is where we start segmenting the data. The data actually comes from the user, moves down through our network and through these seven layers. It's in the forms of data. Then The data at the transport layer is segmented or broken up into pieces. And then these pieces uh, hit the network layer where we add an IP address. And then they become what we call packets when they have the IP address added to them. Then we move to our data link layer. Data link layer is where the packets become frames because we add more, more information to it. And the data layer, we're going to add a MAC address, a physical address. And then finally we get to the physical address, and this is our bits. This is where we take our data and we transform it into bits. Those are ones and zeros, and they're in the form of voltage levels, highs and lows. And then it goes out onto our media and to get to the next computer. Uh, I'm an omic, uh, to help memorize this. Uh, it's application, presentation, session, transport, network, data link, and physical. And this can help you to memorize it. All people, we're using the first letter A here for application. Then people, the P for presentation, seem to need data processing. So if you can memorize this, you can break it down for the layer for the seven layers. All people seem to need data processing. This is one uh, monomic out of quite a few that have come up for this. Uh, OSI model continued. The application layer, our top layer, uh, separates data into protocol data units. The PDUs is uh, where we first start taking our data and start breaking it up into uh, packets. And this first layer is just our data units. Application layer, uh, PDUs, uh, they progress down through the OSI model layer, going to the six and so on until they get to number one. Data transverses the network until it reaches the second computer's physical layer. And then it comes up through these seven layers until it gets back to the user again. Uh, transfer of information happens in milliseconds. So it's lightning fast or the speed of light, so it happens almost instantaneously. Now uh, here we see two users at the top here. One user is going to send data down through the layers. We're going to turn it into ones and zeros. It's going to come back up through the physical layer and then back up and be presented on this user's uh, monitor. And here you can see uh, the packets. It's data for the first three layers. Then the data is segmented. Then we add 
a network address in the form of an IP address and it becomes a packet. And then we turn it into a frame by adding our physical address, which we call a MAC address. Then it's converted into bits and sent out over our media. Normally the media would be a uh, probably a Cat5 cable, copper, but it could be fiber optics. It also could be wireless. And then it goes out and comes back in here. The ones and zeros uh, are coming up. Uh, we first take uh, and convert, uh, create a frame from these ones and zeros. The frame has the MAC address and that's taken off. Then we move it up to our network layer. And at the network layer, we remove the IP address and we're making sure that the MAC address and the IP address are actually for this particular user because this user will have both of these addresses. So if both of these addresses match, we move the packet up to the transport layer and we begin to uh, create segments out of it. Then the segments is turned into the data and then the data is presented to the user. The OSI model, application layer, does not include software applications such as Microsoft Word or Netscape. Uh, services communicate between software programs and lower layers of the network service. A good example would be like Internet Explorer. Uh, that would be something that we would be using to drive this process. Uh, also file, print, message, database, application services would be a part of this application layer. Along with, uh, again, the World Wide Web, uh, email, uh, SMTP is a protocol that's used with email. Presentation layer, the next layer. Protocols at the presentation layer accept the application layer data and format it. Now this serves like a translator because this data is going to be formatted depending on what the data is. If it's a Microsoft Word document, we're going to put it into a document format. If it's a picture, we're going to put it into some kind of a picture format. So it depends on what this data is, how it's going to be um, presented, or, or what we're going to do with it. Uh, presentation layer protocols perform the coding, uh, compression, could also be encryption and decryption. We might be encrypting this data or decrypt, decrypting it. A session layer, the next layer down, the third layer. Uh, protocols in the session layer, they coordinate and maintain the communications between the two nodes. So they establish the connection. They maintain the connection and then they also tear the connection down. Sessions uh, refers to the connection for ongoing data exchange between two parties. Session layer functions are establishing and keeping alive this communication link for the duration of the session. Keep the communication secure. Uh, we're going to synchronize the, and dialogue between the two nodes. Determine uh, whether communications have been cut off, and if so, figure out how and when to restart it. Uh, that's it for this part. Uh, thank you very much for your time.